A dam built by Ethiopia on the largest tributary of the Nile River has set off a global fight over water. The dispute serves as an example of what climate change diplomacy could look like in the future. The Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has set off a three-country dispute over the rights to the Nile River's water. The Nile provides 86 percent of Egypt's water. But first, it has to flow through Ethiopia and Sudan to get there. Egypt has called the dam an existential threat, even going so far as to threaten military action against Ethiopia. The United States tried to mediate discussions between the three countries earlier this year, but Ethiopia walked away. They accused the U.S. of siding with Egypt. The U.S. is now reportedly cutting up to $130 million in aid to Ethiopia because of the dispute. Slate senior editor Joshua Keating has been covering this story, and he joins me now from Washington. Joshua, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Help us understand why this dam is so important to both Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia. Sure. Well, the reason it's uh, important to Ethiopia is uh, fairly apparent. About 70 percent of Ethiopians lack access to electricity. And if this were built, it would be the largest hydroelectric dam in Africa. And it could go uh, a long way to you know, bringing Ethiopia's large and growing population, uh, putting them on the grid. Now, Egypt, as you mentioned in the intro, see this, sees this as an existential threat. Um, they worry that it'll threaten the water supply that uh, its 98 million people uh, depend on for their very livelihoods. Uh, Sudan is kind of in the middle. It sort of uh, has a more nuanced take, I'd say. They've generally been supportive of the project. It could reduce flooding on the Blue Nile, and they could get access to some of this hydropower. But Sudan also wants to see some uh, guarantees about water safety issues and uh, reach a, a firm agreement on how the dam's going to be managed. Josh, it's been 12 years since the investment bank Goldman Sachs identified water as the petroleum for the next century. And if you've ever lived or traveled in the Middle East, you'll know how true that statement is. So how does climate change complicate the fight over water rights? Sure. Well, the important thing to realize about this dam is because it's a hydroelectric dam, that means in theory, Egypt should have nothing to worry about. All the water that's going into the dam will eventually uh, flow uh, north to Egypt. The thing is, if they fill it uh, too quickly, it could uh, prevent that water from reaching Egypt, or if there's a natural drought that happens during the filling of the dam. And what's happening with climate change, uh, we know that temperatures are going up in this area, um, but the picture for water is a little less certain. Uh, and it's possible that it could exacerbate droughts or make rainy seasons longer and just basically make the, the cycle of, of you know, rainy and, and dry seasons that this region is used to get a lot less predictable. And that's going to make it a lot harder to manage this dam in a way that works for all the countries. A lot of experts I talk to say that, you know, this isn't necessarily a water issue so much as a trust issue. Um, Egypt mm -hmm. and Sudan have to trust the way that this uh, dam's being operated is not going to hurt them. And that becomes a lot harder to have that trust when, um, you know, the, the future uh, climate conditions in the area become less predictable. And of course, a fight like this is not exclusive to the Nile. We're having them right here in the U.S. As you write, Arizona and California's fight over water from the Colorado River is the basis of one of the longest running Supreme Court cases in U.S. history, with cases as far back as 1931. So now that the public knows more about the impact of climate change, what does the fight over water look like here in the U.S.? Sure. Yeah, this is not uh, it, this is not exclusive to any one region. Anytime you have multiple jurisdictions sharing a river, there's going to need to be um, uh, debates and allocations for how that river is used. I mean, uh, right near where I live, uh, Maryland recently sued the state of Pennsylvania uh, over keeping uh, pollution out of Chesapeake Bay. Uh, in the southwestern United States, the Colorado River. river which uh, four U.S. states depend on, as well as two states in Mexico. Uh, it may be, you know, the most allocated and adjudicated river in the world. Uh, every drop of that river has been uh, allocated to one jurisdiction or another. 
But, you know, already in the last 15 years, the uh, river's flow has decreased by 6 percent, uh, could decrease a lot more in the coming years. And, and that's a you know, threat for the livelihoods of about 40 million people and about you know, 90 percent of, of this country's winter veg vegetable production. So really, um, the allocation of these rivers matter to all of us. And it's something that's going to be uh, a lot trickier to deal with uh, in years to come as, you know, uh, populations grow and as droughts become more common. Absolutely. There's no sign of this problem getting better in the near future. All right. Well,